Shabbat Shalom, which means peace on Yahweh's holy Sabbath day. My name is Isak Ben Israel, and I'm the priest of the United Congregation of Israel. Um, welcome to another holy convocation service that Yahweh has enjoined unto us. Uh, for Yahweh has given us a great legacy and a holy law that we are to uh, uh, follow and deal with in its righteousness. And it shall be our righteousness if we uh, 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 contain and walk in the things that Yahweh has given unto us to do. As usual, we're going to open uh, uh, our holy convocation service up with the oracles of the United Congregation, starting at 1 Peter <clears throat> chapter 4 and verses 7 through 11. But the end of all things is at hand. Be you therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent and love among yourselves. For love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. As every man has received a gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Elohim. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Elohim gives. That Elohim in all things may be glorified through Yahshua, the Mashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 29 through 32. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of Elohim, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be you kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Elohim for the Mashiach's sake have forgiven you. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. Be you therefore followers of Elohim as dear children, and walk in love, as the Mashiach also have loved us, and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become of saints." Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Revelation chapter 3, verses 20 through 22. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And indeed, we invite the angel that stands at the door to come in and soak with us and us with him that we may read out of this great legacy and grow thereby. And now, it is written that my people suffer for a lack of knowledge. It is also written that the knowledge and the wisdom of Solomon gained him many riches. One might conclude that knowledge is one of the mightiest forces around. But consider that there is a force strong enough to block knowledge and understanding from taking root in one's soul. This force is called emotion. When emotion is involved, it overrides intelligence. The overriding power of emotion causes us to build up walls that will not allow knowledge to enter in. These walls then become strongholds that can only be penetrated by the spirit. The title of today's sermon is Emotional Strongholds. Emotional Strongholds. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw near. When you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves and the grounders cease because they are few and those that look out of the windows be darkened. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of, of the bird and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fear shall be in the way 
and the almond tree shall flourish and the grasshopper shall be a burden and desire shall fail because man goes to his long home and the mourners go about the street or ever the silver cord be loosed or the golden bowl be broken or the pitcher be broken at the fountain or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto Elohim who gave it. Vanity of vanity, says preacher, all is vanity. Now, when it talks about the spirit shall return unto Elohim who gave it, he's talking about that the breath of man. When he breathed uh, 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 the breath of man, he breathed spirit into man, and that spirit was the air. And if you listen uh, um, to what's written, there's a way where it says uh, uh, the, the, the spirit of man goes upward and the spirit of beast goes downward because a uh, 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 beast is facing his breath goes downward, man's goes upward. So that spirit is that breath of life that he breathed into man. It says when he blew that air into man, he became a living spirit. That was that air that was uh, uh, breathed. Now we were talking about uh, a little earlier, right before everything uh, 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 started, and it's talking about how, how few uh, men may be on the earth and all of these things. I mean, we're seeing these things and praise Yahweh that we have, um, that Yahweh has allowed uh, 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 us to keep another holy Shabbat. And, and uh, we saw storms just come through, but they didn't touch us. But they were close enough to us, but they didn't touch us. And this was uh, uh, those things. Uh, uh, it says that you shall behold that evil with your eyes, but it shall not come near you. <clears throat> but you're going to see it. But don't get it twisted. It's going to be a vexation of spirit to even see the, 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 the destruction that is about to come upon man. Because I don't care how hard you think you are to watch our people die in the street and know that it's Yahweh's will. Yahweh says he's going to kill off two thirds. That's the only way we're going to listen. We're not going to listen, uh, uh, you know, if nice things. Understand that Israel is a people that seek after a sign. And what better sign than dead bodies laying in the street? Verse nine. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea. He gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end and much study is a weariness of flesh. This is why I tell people, a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, ask me, did you read this book? Did you read this book? Well, I, I got a, 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 a collection of books. It's called the Holy Bible, and it's got so much in it. When I get, you know, this one, then I'll go to some other books. I go to other books to, to read, to help me understand this book. Now, if the other book don't help me understand this book, I have no reason to, to, to read that book. Yeah, and we'll know, we know, you know, especially uh, 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 brothers, and, and, and I know Kish does the kind of, you know, work I do, you know, when you uh, 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 go and you see some of them sisters' books, they got the maintenance man, and they got all these kind of books, and them books keep their mind not right, see? That's why they be looking at you all cross-eyed when you come in and, and, and to do work. You be like, you've been reading that maintenance man book, ain't you? That's why you looking at me cross-eyed. You need to put that book down. That, 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 that's, that's, that's not a good book. You need to be reading something that's, that'd be good to feed your soul with good stuff. See, instead they read that maintenance man, and then when when we go to do work, we start getting them them, them crazy looks. See, that that's a just like this is a spirit. You might want to be careful with the spirit of all that other stuff that 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 people go to read, and then they lose your time. So I found out something. I don't have no leisure time. That's why I got rid of my motorcycle, and all of, I don't have leisure time. That is a thing of the past. So. I don't have leisure reading. I don't have leisure writing. I don't have leisure anything because I don't have leisure time. Verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go to 1 Samuel uh, uh, chapter 15. Now, that was a, a, a real hard thing for me to do to get rid of that motorcycle, though. It, it, it took some, uh, it, it, it took some, uh, whew. 
I had to I had to just park it for a while and and then I'd just come in the garage and just look at it. And look at that. Boy, behold the vanity. Yeah, boy, you gotta get hit in the same eye ten times straight for you to say, I don't think this is pleasing unto Yahweh. <laughs> like, so you didn't figure that out by the other nine punches in that same eye? Right. That's that's uh that's us. I fell right around the corner on that bike. I'm talking about I got like up the hill. I didn't even get just, I mean, I barely got around the corner and bit the dust. Pow! Messed up my hand and my foot, and I come leaning all down the thing. And somebody else had to roll the motorcycle, and I, here I come. Yeah, bro. Yeah, that angel was making a point, see? We he, he, understand what what was told to uh, 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 Moshe. There's an angel that I, I I've given to lead you in the way, but don't you provoke him, for he will not pardon your iniquity. So we get off into things, and then when things happen to us, we say, "Man, that was an unfortunate incident." Yeah, that was that angel. <laughs> he stuffed you upside your head, but he didn't kill you. See, we don't see the mercy in them things. Yeah, 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 something happened to you. But he didn't kill you. There are some people that did some things in here one time. Duck, done deal. There's mercy even in when he deal with you. First Samuel chapter 15, <laughs> verse 1. Samuel said unto Saul, Yahweh sent me to anoint you to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken you unto the voice of the words of Yahweh. Thus says Yahweh of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Instruction. Verse 4. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Tileam, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to a city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get you down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them. For you showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou cometh to Shur. That is, over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But there's always a, a bad situation whenever there's a but in a situation. Okay? But has got us in a lot of trouble. And I'm going to leave that right there. Verse 9. But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs, and all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vile and refused, that they destroyed utterly. So everything that was ugly, they destroyed, but all the pretty stuff they kept. That, those were not the instructions. Verse 10, Then came the word of Yahweh unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king, for he has turned back from following me, and have not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto Yahweh all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of Yahweh, I have performed the commandment of Yahweh. This brother lacks understanding. This brother is saying with, with, with a nice voice, I have performed, I have done that which you have commanded me. Verse 14, and Samuel said, what meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, they have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto Yahweh your Elohim. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Now you see, you see, it's, you see the day and the we. See, we love to accept uh, 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 when something is good. 
But whenever something goes bad, they did it. It was them, them. We have a serious problem with the them, thems. Whenever there's a problem, they did it. Whenever it's something good, we did it. All right. Now, here's the king. Now, he's over everything. Then Samuel said unto Saul, say, stay, and I will tell you what Yahweh has said to me this night. And he said unto him, say on. Now, learn the difference of what's going on between uh, 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 this prophet. The prophet is getting his words directly from Yahweh. Verse 17. And Samuel said, when you were little in thine own sight, were you not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And Yahweh anointed you king over Israel. And Yahweh sent you on a journey and said, go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. First Samuel chapter 17 and uh, 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 verse 1. Now we must understand how important it is that we follow our uh, instructions. Um, uh, it was told to Moshe that you follow the instructions that were shown you in the mount uh, in response to setting up holy things. Uh, it was also told him that an angel was given charge to see him through the way and see that you do not provoke him <clears throat> because he will not pardon your iniquity. <clears throat> so understand, uh, there's an angel that has been given the charge of, of uh, uh, making sure that certain things happen. So when you deal with uh, 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 those things, that angel <clears throat> has his own charge himself. Now, if he allows you to get too far off, you realize that that affects him. This is what Elder used to tell us, that each job affects another job. You can't half do your job and think, well, that, that was just you. No, 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 you affected that brother, that sister, that sister, because you did not follow your instructions and you did half of your job. If you don't do what you're supposed to do, if that angel let that slide, that angel got judgment to face. He got, he got days he got to go up here before Yahweh too. What you think? He going he gonna to lose his salvation because of you? Because of some filthy flesh that he don't like anyway? No, the angel going to take care of that business. Uh, chapter 17, verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shuko, which belongs to Judah, and pitched between Shukoth and Azekah in Ephes Demim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side. And there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Um, people were, uh, 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 were, were talking about uh, um, this thing uh, at the job and was saying, you know, uh, you know, the dude wasn't that, wasn't that tall. You know, uh, uh, he was really just six feet. People don't get up in here and find out what this means. Six cubits is not the same as six feet. This dude was like nine feet or, you know, something, something crazy. You know, it was, it, it was something, a cubit and a, and, and a feet is not the same thing. But because you have people reading this, and actually when the guy said it, uh, I just answered, I was like, no, nah, he's about nine feet, bro. Uh, I didn't know where he got six feet from. And that just happened this week. So now reading this kind of, uh, you know, as you go along, you'll try to, you'll see how Yahweh kind of deal with you. I had no idea where he was getting six feet from. He wasn't that tall. You know, the people were short then, you know. So, you know what I'm saying? It, it might. So the, so the dude was saying, you know, basically we was all midgets. So a six feet dude was a giant. You know, not understanding, you know, what a cubit was. And when he said it, I just didn't know where he got six feet. So that part just went by me. But now reading this, I now understand where he got six feet and six cubits and a span. That's a whole nother measurement. So you got to add up the cubits and then a span. So it's six cubits, but then you got to add that span to it. Uh, verse five. And he had a helmet of brass upon his head and he was armed with a coat of mail. The weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs and a target of brass between his shoulders. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and you servants of Saul? Choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. 
If ye be able to fight with me and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall you be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Now, Dawi was the son of the Ephratite of Bethlehem, Yehuda, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons, and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shema. And Dawid was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But Dawid went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem, which is where he was supposed to be. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening and presented himself forty days. And yes, he said unto Dawid his son, Take now for your brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp to your brethren. Now, there was a reason right, right, right here in, in verse 16. And the Philistine drew near morning and even and presented himself 40 days. That means he taunted them 40 days and not one man uh, 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 said anything against that Philistine. Not one man would go a uh, 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 fight. This is why I say Yahweh has a tendency to do things over and over because Israel is naysayers, man. Israel, Israel, will, 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 Israel will talk you out your dreams, bro. Uh, Israel sit right here because it happened 40 times. You can't deny it. See, if it had said one or two times, well, you know, I, I was I was sick. That's why I didn't fight uh, 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 Goliath. I would have went down there. And I went out and got me a stepladder and slapped the piss out of, out of, out of uh, Goliath. You know what I'm saying? But see, I was down there. I was out, you know what I'm saying? I had a stomach virus. See, but try a dude to tell you he had a stomach virus for 40 days. If you got a stomach virus for 40 days, you dead. All right. All right. That's something seriously wrong with you. If you got a stomach virus for 40 days. So there's a reason why he let this happen for 40 days. So not a now one of them could say, well, I was going to go. But what had happened was this took care of that lie. He let it go on long enough to see not now one of them soldiers was going to go fight. All right. Uh, verse 18. Uh, and carry these ten cheeses unto the uh, captain of their thousand, and look how your brethren fare and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And Dawid rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench at the host, uh, as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And Dawid left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words. And Dawid heard him. <clears throat> Excuse me. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. We know that because of the 40 days. <clears throat> Verse 25, and the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter <clears throat> and make his father's house free in Israel. So not only were they afraid of this guy physically, there was a, 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 a financial you know, uh, uh, prize given to anybody that would fight him. Not only that, you know, there was a woman involved. And y'all know we do some ugly stuff when women get involved, Jack. You know, so he got a woman and riches and still nobody wants to go up against Goliath. They said, man, that's a pretty daughter you got, but it ain't going to do me no good if I'm dead. So everybody left Goliath alone. Verse 26, and Dawid spake to the men uh, that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living Elohim? Yeah, that's a pretty bold statement right there for a little dude. Verse 27. And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that kills him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he had spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against Dawid. And he said, Why came you down hither? 
And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the naughtiness of your heart, for you have come down that you might see the battle. Now, Eliab was one of those people that stood there in the 40 days. All right. Now, let me show you something about Israel. When Israel can't do something, they figure, hell, you can't do it either. Right. Now, he's a big, big soldier now. David is the little dude who smelled like sheep. Okay? He is a big, strong guy who got the sword in his hand. Right. Verse 29. And Dawid said, what have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which Dawid spake, they rehearsed them before Saul and sent for him. And Dawid said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to Dawid, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. Even the king knew he couldn't, uh, uh, he couldn't fight against the man, so he going to say Dawid can't do it either. You cannot limit the spirit of Yahweh. That is the difference. When the spirit of Yahweh is present, you cannot limit that. We not only limit other people, we limit ourselves. We put limitations on what we can and cannot do. You don't know what you can do when the spirit get behind you. So you can't limit yourself. Verse 34. And Dawi said unto Saul, your servant kept his father's sheep. And there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. See, he done had situations with the spirit. See, you learn how the spirit did with you. So was he boastful? No. He had watched how the spirit had dealt with him before. He already had pride, but they didn't know this. But he knows this because of the things that he's been through. You have to watch how the spirit deal with you. Verse 36. Your servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he has defied the armies of the living Elohim. And Dawid said, Moreover, Yahweh have delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, and he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. See, he done had experiences with the spirit. He has trust in the spirit. You have to learn how to trust the spirit. He trusts the spirit even before he get in front of the Philistine. He's already saying what's going to happen. Do we trust like that? And Saul said unto Dawid, go and Yahweh be with you. We, we, we better get to practicing because I'm trying to tell you it's going to be real ugly when all them uh, uh, armies are marching up and the whole ground is vibrating from all them people that's marching up. You're going to have to figure out something. You're going to have to figure out something you're going to believe in. Because ain't going to be no idol for you to kiss and nothing for you to hold on to. You ain't going to see nothing. You're going to have to believe that Yahweh is there. Verse 38. And Saul armed Dawid with his armor and put a an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with the coat of mail. And Dawid girded his sword upon his armor and he essayed to go. He had not proved it. Check that out. See, he had proved Himself was proved through the other situations that he went through. But that particular weapon had not been proved in battle. And Dawid said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And Dawid put them off him. The same way Yahweh is going to deal. He will not go to a, a battle with something that he has not proved in battle. So you're going to have to go through small battles, even if it's, if it's uh, with people within this very room. But you're going to be proven in battle before you go to battle. I guarantee you that. Verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto Dawid. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw Dawid, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy, and of fair countenance. In other words, he was a short, pretty dude. Who oh, this little pretty nigga gonna do out here? Who the pretty dude? Who is the pretty dude? All y'all soldiers and the best thing y'all got is a little pretty one? Oh, God. Man, get this little pretty dude out of here. Right. Then he a pretty little boy. He ain't no pretty little man. He's a pretty little boy. Look at little boy. So he, so he disrespecting man? Come on, man. You serious? The pretty one? Right. Okay. 
Verse 43. And the Philistine said unto Dawid, Am I a dog that you came 